December 2008. With the daily influx of workers, the city has swollen to 10 million people. In London's ambulance control center, the busiest in the world, calls are coming in thick and fast. In the corner sits a single paramedic. His job? To scan thousands of calls, looking for the most critical. At 3.38, he spots one. In the city's northwest, a child has run into the path of a 4x4 vehicle. His life now hangs in the balance. But from a porter cabin on a hospital roof, help is on its way. If there's a serious car accident, a fall from height, a stabbing, or a shooting, the capital has a trauma team on constant alert. London's Air Ambulance. Call sign, Medic One. London's air ambulance has been called to the aid of a 12-year-old boy hit by a car. With suspected head injuries, he needs specialist treatment on scene quickly. Whenever you get a call to a, a child, it doesn't matter how experienced you are, how long you've been doing the job, it really starts your heart racing. Uh, we'll make a decision when we're there, we're home. Unlike a ground ambulance, Medic One takes a specially trained paramedic and a trauma doctor to the scene. They can anesthetize and even operate before reaching hospital. The co pilot spots blue lights. A ground ambulance crew is battling to keep the boy alive. They need to find a landing site as close as possible and as rapidly as possible. It's a particularly built up area. The best they can find is a sports field, but it's half a mile from the scene. The team have to find their way on foot Time is not on their side. Had a bit of a problem getting close to the scene of this little boy. Hopefully, uh, the ambulance control is organising for a, a vehicle to rendezvous with us. Cricklewood Lane, it's that way, isn't it? Maybe one going out. We're at junction of uh, Farm Avenue and Cricklewood Lane. In the control centre, the team's duty paramedic can coordinate with the other emergency services. Having alerted the police to their whereabouts, a squad car comes to their aid. Thank you, guys. It is rare to do a child knocked down compared to adults. The fact that it's rarer adds a degree of anxiety. This is Gareth's leading today. Hi, Gareth. Who have we got here? year old gentleman who's been struck by okay. a car that went up there. Okay. You could see from the outset he was a very, very sick child. He was in a deep coma. He'd had a significant blow to the head, and you could see that his face and head was bloodied through bruising and wounds. But the thing that concerned me most was that his breathing was very, very poor and grunting. <laughs> It's not right, is it? No, it's not right. He's struggling quite heavily with it, but I can't do much. His lungs are bruised and blood blocks his airway. Young Mohammed is critically short of breath. That is absolutely crucial because the brain has got enough problems. Starvation of oxygen would, if not even disabled, result in his death. I'm going to need all this space secured here. The team need to pass a tube into Mohammed's windpipe. Okay. Before doing this, he must be anaesthetised. Yeah, this is going to be an RSI, no triage decisions yet. We anaesthetise the child probably once every month. 
train for it, we don't do very many of them. The weight of a child or age of a child has significant implications on the dosages of drugs that we give. So we use five mils. Five mils of atomidate. And these drugs are not simple antibiotics. These are drugs that can, given in the wrong dose, can literally stop your heart. The crew have been on the scene for 16 minutes. By the time Mohammed is intubated, daylight has almost gone. They still have to fly him to hospital. It was imperative to put the tube down and control his breathing. And after the tube was put down, we literally had to put suction catheters down that tube, deep down into his lungs, and suck out uh, the blood. And all of that blood was coming from the bruised, uh, damaged lungs that uh, had occurred when the car uh, hit his chest. It's now crucial that he gets to the right hospital for his injuries. The helicopter will fly him to the Royal London Hospital, Britain's busiest trauma center. is a small operation. A single duty doctor and a paramedic on call for 10 million people. But they make a big impact on the capital's most seriously injured. In the past year, the service has attended nearly 2,000 incidents. An hour after arriving on scene, Mohammed is handed over to the hospital. Much of the work of a normal A&E department has already been done. Okay, everybody listen up. Hey, everyone nice and quiet. We get Team leader, over. ready? He's a 12-year-old who was hit by uh, a car. He has uh, a head injury. He's got multiple facial abrasions and abrasions to his lower limb. This x-ray shows that this side of the uh, chest is affecting the normal, but there's much uh, white out on this side, which is either damage to the lung itself or he's actually bled into uh, that side of the chest and there's just free blood in that side of the chest. So, I mean, that, that's not good. Not good at all. This is the helicopter's last flight of the day. The work of the team goes on. The helicopter isn't allowed to land in built-up areas at night. So a car is used. A fast car. In it, Dr. Zane Perkins and paramedic Elisa Barr, who also has to drive, are covering the whole of Greater London. It's 3.15 a.m. and in South London, a motorcyclist is lying critically injured. Red base, Delta Alpha 77. Hi guys. I'm Zane and this is Elisa. Cold winter's night, he was covered up in blankets. Difficult to get a picture of actually you know, what's going on. It's suspected that 26-year-old David has lost control on black ice before crashing into the back of a parked car. What have you got there? When you removed the clothing and actually looked at him, you could see how deformed both of his upper legs were. Bilateral, so two fractured upper legs is actually life-threatening. You've got a lot of space in your thigh to bleed into. All right, guys, the most important thing here is that he's most likely lost a fair amount of blood, as you guys have quite rightly picked up. So I want to be as careful as possible moving him. We don't want him to re-bleed or anything like that. David has clearly broken both his thigh bones, or femurs. It is also suspected that he has broken his pelvis. Not good. But the fractures themselves are not the biggest worry. Okay, the biggest cause of death from trauma that is preventable is blood loss. And these injuries that he had essentially were all, all about blood loss.